in the fabled land of Northern California. Nestled in the Valley of Sacramento, two friends begin a journey to enlighten the world about their experience living life as a Zinio. But what is a Zinio, you may ask? If you wish to know, then follow them on their adventures. Welcome to the Zinio Chronicles. This is James. This is Mike. And, well, it's been a few weeks since you've heard from us. And that has to do with some personal things that were going on in the lives of one of the people on this podcast. Holy um, smokes. Yeah, you're, you're putting it light. <laughs> it's something that we may talk about in the future. We may not talk about right now. But um, needless to say, it's something that kind of had us take a couple of weeks off for break for personal reasons. And well, again, we'll, we'll touch on that topic when, uh, uh, unless you want to you want you want to touch on that topic right now. I don't think it's something that's necessarily needs to be kept as something majorly personal. It's something that's part of a major thing that's happening socially. And uh, I have a couple of words, not too, not a huge amount, but um, I can keep it light and I can keep it brief if if you're okay with that. I, I sure that 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 works for me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I will say I will say that I'm not proud of your beer choice, but whatever. My beer choice? Yeah, drinking that Mexican stuff. Uh yeah, right. Yeah, jeez. Um, yeah, I, I especially when I don't know what letter of the Greek alphabet we're on anymore. Um, yeah. but okay. So basically, long story short, guys, uh, I caught COVID a couple of weeks ago. Um. And I had the worst fucking time. I didn't have the absolute worst time. There has been a lot of people that have dealt with a, a, on a lot worse a level that I have, and I can be very yeah, grateful for that. Very grateful for that. Because the thing is, you're still alive, right? Exactly. Like as as far as what I as far as what I uh, <laughs> dealt with, it, it could be a lot worse. And like like dead worse. Yeah. Like dead. yeah. <laughs> um. There were there were. I didn't personally think that there were uh, that there was a situation where I thought that my life was particularly in danger or anything. Um, I was extremely vigilant, um, and my wife and I are very, very good at being very uh, on watch when it comes to something as important as this to keep an eye on. Um, so, as far as that was concerned, like there were no particular signs where I thought that I was in any kind of danger. I never thought that I would have to even go to the hospital. Um, and this is a, this is a, a more, I would consider this to be a more recent, uh, strain of it. It wasn't the big ones. It wasn't like Delta or the initial, I caught, um, I caught one of the strains of Omicron, most likely, I don't know, I don't have a confirmed, but most likely BA5, which is the strain that's going around as the dominant strain in the United States. And I'm still, you could probably hear in my voice a little bit. Um, I'm still dealing with the aftermath and it's been two weeks, over two weeks, since uh i initially got sick but boy i'll tell you what for about four or five days i think laid me the hell out and then on day 10 i got laid out again which was a surprise that was a shock to me but um i i can i can see that your body's your body's been doing a bunch of fighting and uh you probably had you probably felt like you had a little bit of energy maybe did a little bit of stuff around the house you know just did a little bit more because you were starting to feel a little bit better and well, it uh, maybe hit you down. That's a possibility. Um, that happens. No, actually, me. what ended up happening was no. I went stir crazy and I stayed the fuck in the only room that I could to keep myself isolated from my wife because as much as I don't want to get it, I definitely don't want her to get it. And luckily enough, so wait. What you're saying is you ha- is you had a you had a a bedroom only vacation. Yes. <sighs> I know it sounds oh, great, dude. I know it no, sounds it does, great. It, don't be jealous. It does, though. Like, don't be jealous. I went stir crazy. I ran out of things to try to do. I hit a, uh, I actually hit about a depression that lasted for a few days because I was unable to do anything. Um, oh, I know. You messaged me during those times. Yeah, it was not <laughs> pl- it, as pleasant as that, as appealing as something like that sounds. It wasn't. To that degree, well, on the, on the psychological well, no, degree, right? You're 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 also you're also a far more social person than what I am. I, I, I don't consider no like just because I happen to have a social alone. job doesn't mean that I am that I have I have graduated to a far less and less social person uh, than than I once was, and I honestly was social because I was probably lonely. 
Um, but that was that's what happens when you live in a giant house by yourself and can't afford money for anything aside from rent. And you're living in your twenties. Um, <clears throat> not to say like the size of the house was great, but it was too big for me. I was able to do uh, a, a bit in there, and I was able to have company on a regular basis. But it was only the regular friends I had that I was really comfortable around. I think I know where our disc, where, where this little bit of a disconnect happens between you and me with this. Mm-hmm. You've had moments where you've lived on your own in a house by yourself. Ah, yes. I have literally never lived in a house by myself. Oh, dude, it is. Um, it's an experience that, for certain amounts of time, I thought was relatively pleasant it was nice to be like after you get past that honeymoon phase though things get real difficult and i have dealt with that situation on multiple accounts um and i i am someone that all i can say is the idea of being able to sit in your living room naked eating cheetos watching football (laughs) that seems really really appealing to me and i've never had the opportunity to do that you have a point you have a point those days are nice Those days like, are nice. Oh, but. wow. My penis is orange now. Whoopsie. <laughs> I mean, that's. What were you doing while you were eating the Cheetos is the question. It's, it's not while you're eating the Cheetos. Wait till after. I'm not an animal. God. <laughs> Do things in order. There's a, there's a sequence exactly. that must be done. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, um, that was, that was one of the more interesting experiences I had um, was just being stuck by myself, not able to do anything. I even like the only time I left the room was when I gathered things to find stuff for myself to do. And even then I did nothing but like sit in the bed, play video games and keep getting cramps and bed sores. Cause I, I couldn't get comfortable. Um, I mean, video games is something video right? games is something. This is true. This is true. Um, I mean, you could you could have been watching movies and TV series, especially since you now have uh, Disney Plus. <laughs> you know what? You could have been only... watching. You could have been watching all the Marvel movies. Okay, so the only reason why I didn't do that was because the only streaming capable apparatus I had inside the uh, bedroom was a PlayStation Three, and there is no Disney Plus app on the PlayStation Three. Yeah, you have to have at least uh, Xbox uh, One yeah. or a PS Five or. Um, a lot of your newer smart TVs will yeah. have it, and if you're if you're an old fart like me <laughs> and you still have a cable provider, uh, they they have all the streaming services as uh, as parts of the cable providing now. So which is great. If you got your cable box, you can you can stream everything you could possibly. Basically, all the services are there as uh, apps on the box. So really yeah. easy to work with if you want to do it that way. But aside from the Aside from the stir crazy part, and the reason why I went stir crazy was because for the first five days, like I barely, barely tested positive, like on it. So, on I work through the weekend and I work live sound, and then on Sunday, wonder where you got exposed. (laughs) I actually have more of a confirm of the possibility of the place I could have gotten exposed, and it wasn't at the it wasn't at the live venue that i was working funny enough pretty, funny enough i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure i know where it was then it was it was kind of funny but um but anyway i was feeling i started feeling like a ball of mucus in my throat on sunday and what sucks is that when it onsets it feels like allergies it just feels like allergies it feels like any well, other day that i have regular ass allergies the, that that's actually the the part that is probably the most interesting in the world that we live in now in the post covid world is um if you're somebody who doesn't really care about uh about the situation yeah people that, that it doesn't it is not worried about it then this isn't going to bother you but if you're one of those people that is worried about it if you have uh you know whatever the whatever your specific reason and motivation is for you to be worried about whether you have covid or you're passing covid or whatever yeah um anything that you get that resembles a cold things that you know years ago i would have just been like okay i got the sniffles whatever i'm not gonna i'll see how it progresses right i'll deal with it i can't even i can't even remember how many times i uh i came to hang out over at your house in that house that you were i think the house you were talking about the big one yeah is, is that the house i hung out at yeah uh, uh regularly yep uh, we'd come out to that house or we'd come out to uh 
to see shows with, with the band playing and you know it's loud and of course we're right up in, at the foot of the stage so it's even louder there and there are so many times that you don't know about where um i was taking uh um you know like freaking D- day quill and tylenol and ibuprofen before i got there basically anytime that you didn't see me drink a beer when i was at any of the venues right anytime i didn't have a, have a, have a beer and because that's that's that, that's my go-to at a, at a club or, or you know whatever i'll have a beer or two i usually won't drink anything much harder than that right um but anytime you did not see me have a beer that was probably a night that I took some kind of Dayquil type medication, to where it would it would mask as much of the symptoms as humanly possible, and then I probably took Tylenol on top of that to deal with the headache that I was going to get from being dehydrated, from uh, being there, you know, at the at the foot of the stage enjoying the music, right, and sweating the and all, I would yeah. Get from, yeah, and the headache I'd get from all the loud music. I guarantee you, almost every single night I was taking that medication because you didn't worry much about it. You can worry about it. Yeah, you know, you may have a cold of some type, but whatever, it's not that big a deal. Now you get any of those symptoms and, you know, for, again, that subject, that, that subset of the population that is going to worry about spreading COVID around, you're, that's your first concern is, ah, oh, damn, do I got COVID? And then you got to oh, worry yeah. about, great, if I, if I, if I get, if I have COVID, you know, who am I going to pass it to? I got to, I got to test to make sure. And then once, once the test to make sure. Um, you know, then I got to let, uh, you know, work, different workplaces know if you're a parent, you got to let schools know you have to follow all kinds of different protocols for stuff. And I mean, in our household, uh, what a couple, a week or two before you tested positive, we had, uh, one of our children test positive. Yeah. And so, yeah. uh, luckily, luckily my job allows me to work from home. So I, you know, had to let the job know, Hey, I'm not coming in. And, um, another member of the household had to let had to let their job know and they couldn't go in for a couple of days uh-huh. and and so you know luckily that's all we had to deal with we we had a couple of doctor's appointments we had to reschedule and the kid was sick for three days or so and not really that bad um he made it out worse than it than it really was because he's one of those that uh you know is really not uh not not much of a trooper when they get sick and i, I can <laughs> I tell the difference sick, with him I can tell the difference with him when he's actually not really feeling well and when he's just wanting to bitch and complain about not feeling well. Yeah. And there is a difference. There is a difference. He is, it's very, very evident in his face that whether it's really not feeling good or whether it's just, uh, the, what is considered the new standard, the man flu version of things where men are known <laughs> to just be whiners and criers whenever <laughs> they are sick. Um, just, just for clarification, I, I will, I will, while sick, I will make a full uh, dinner for the uh, the kids and for the rest of the family. And if I have to take breaks to go throw up while doing it, I will do it. I'm not, I'm definitely not that. You're person. telling me. Hold on one second. I, I I wouldn't necessarily like. I know there's not much choice for you, sir. I know there's not much choice, and I understand well, no, that just, to a degree. I'm just one of those people that fights through. That's all. No, I understand fighting through, but you're preparing food while you're sick. Like you're not worried yep. that you're going to give that to your kids. Actually, I kind of hope uh, before before COVID, <laughs> I kind of hope they did so it would build their immune system and make them strong. My kids are tanks, man. That's my fair. Kids are, my kids That's are full fair. on tanks. Yeah, this is and this is the kind of you know what most people take that philosophy too, right? Most people take that philosophy with like the flu or whatever. Um, it's just like that all used right, to be the philosophy with uh, with chicken pox. If you remember when dude, we were kids, they wanted us had to chicken pox uh, parties to try to get us to play with other kids with that yeah. had chicken pox to get them early. Yeah, yeah. So you just took care of the chicken pox because it took care of like, didn't it build up your immunity, immunity to other pox based diseases too? On top of that, not really. Was it like it it's like you get chicken pox and you're pox. like immune to smallpox? Was it like that or no? No, no. Okay, no. Okay, no. I, just, I didn't know. It just got you. It, it just got you immunity to uh, to chicken pox, but um, it doesn't always work. It backfired with me. I never got chicken pox as a, as a child. I got them when I was eighteen, and it was one of the more that oh, was God. definitely one of the more horrific experiences. Yeah, you get it life. as an adult, and that is an absolute nightmare. Head to toe, sir. Head to toe. Oh my God. That and in, inside my mouth, inside my nose, uh, uh, around my eyes. 
Um, yeah, it was, it was the most awful thing. I was completely covered in, and I'm not Uh, even exaggerating on, on this situation. It was every three, two to three inches on my body. There was at least one of those things and everywhere, all over the soles of my feet. Oh my God. Um, yeah. Everywhere places, places that, uh, I previously talked about being orange everywhere, man. It was (laughs) not pleasant at all. You just like, I hate to make this comparison because of the because of the source material but like you were just like you're just like lot dude like how long how long did it last um i'm gonna say a week oh my god dude yeah about a week head to toe for like a week that Um, sucks yeah Yeah. that sucks it was what was nice about it is it kind of went away very quickly when it did go, when it did like the day the day they started going away like within uh, another day or two almost completely gone wow but yeah it was it was i had come home from working at uh at uh, mcdonald's and i i had a I had a bit of a fever wasn't feeling the best um told my told my parents i felt like i had a fever felt you know really drained lightheaded didn't you know just not feeling good took my uh work shirt off and my mother's like oh <laughs> you're not going back to work oh like, god because i mean I'm, I'm i'm 18 this is the summer after right. i graduate from high school and she's like yeah you're not going back to work look at yourself and walking into the door of my uh of my parents uh mobile home you walk in the front door and there's these two uh um there's a closet with these two giant mirrors, you know, the mirror doors on the closet. Oh yeah, for sure. And so that's your standard, uh, that's your standard trailer home closet door. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, um, I had been looking at them and I turned to look at myself in the mirror and yeah, the trunk area, my chest and, and stomach already had, uh, the spots forming. And I called, I called my, I called work to, you know, I called my boss at, at, at McDonald's to tell them. And they were like, well, have you seen a doctor about it? I'm like, no, but I am covered in these things and I am not coming in. <laughs> the time that a cell phone picture, the time that cell phones that take pictures would have been so useful at this point, because then you could have just texted your boss and yeah, be like, I, I ain't coming in. Look at this shit. Like <laughs> you want me you, you want me around uh because at that point I was working uh I was working the bun toaster. I said you uh, it's like really you want me toasting buns for people covered in sores? Okay. If that's what you really want. And that was like the hottest place in the Jesus. Uh, in the uh, in the Just McDonald's looking. to work was in that area because you're right next to where the grill is, but you're by these gigantic bun toasters because there's oh, three different bun toasters for the three different styles of buns that McDonald's would use at that time. So, I would yeah, not was, want was anyone. Area, and that's what I thought was maybe I was just overheated from working in that area. No, nope. That be, being overheated in that area while I was sick with this helped to exacerbate it. I'm sure. Oh, so, spread yeah, it. you could spread fun. it to the other workers. Like that would have caused that could have caused a small epidemic at that store, depending, you know, it, it, although it, apparently it the well, management didn't give a shit and they would ask everybody to come in anyway, apparently. So, uh, no, I mean, he, he, they didn't fire me at, when I took the time off. So, I mean that's the, good. Uh, I, it's kind I, I quit of illegal like three weeks in California, later. but well, I mean, was it was that the case back then? What was that twenty twenty two years ago? Um, twenty four years ago. Oh, okay. God damn, I'm old. I was, I was, I was try. I mean, if it, it was, it was twenty four years ago, it was twenty four years ago, almost around this time. In fact, almost around this time of year, because I know uh, three weeks later, been I about ninety eight. Holy shit! Yeah, that's yeah, that's. Three, that's crazy i I mean i I started college in uh in september so i quit at the very beginning of september mm -hmm. because they had said that they would work with my college schedule Mm -hmm. and then they did not and i told i said you guys promised me you'd work with my college schedule and they said well we're not going to be able to make that work and then i said well i'm not going to be able to work here bye and they're like what i'm like what do you mean what you said you could do that and you didn't so that's a breach of contract i'm out of here well, I mean, there's, there was nothing in writing because I was 18 and it was McDonald's. So they're not going to put anything in writing back then. Shit, and they put it in writing now. They year. stick it all over your. Uh, they stick it all over their advertisements for the now hiring now. But anyway, <laughs> long time ago, galaxy far, far away. So, so yes, we took off two weeks because Mike did get uh, COVID. He was uh, quite sick. Yeah, um, not sick I had to go to the hospital, but sick no. enough that life was miserable. Yeah, it laid me out for about four or five days, um, and then 
after so it laid me out for about four or five days and then i was still positive for about a week and this entire time uh, when i was talking about being stir crazy because i was feeling fine the thing is is i wanted to make doubly sure that i did not give it to my wife so as soon as i started feeling fine like when i knew that i was like laid out flat and i was running a fever i knew i had it but on those days when when the fever started to subside, it started to go away, and I started to feel better, and I was able to move around a little bit, do some stretches, and just kind of like start to keep myself from being so laid out in bed, I started testing, and I was still positive. And I tested daily. And that positive test, even when I felt like right as rain, like I could have gone and done anything. I could have gone out and been whatever. Like, And this is the part that kind of scares me a little bit, that... I tested positive for an entire week. It started to very slowly, gradually subside, but I'm pretty like I'm pretty positive most people don't do that. And I think that's why this is still becoming such a big deal. And it, it really like when you when you put it into perspective, I feel like that's the kind of shit that people should be doing right now when they start to feel better, when the fever goes away. If you're testing positive. You're still contagious. You can still give it to somebody. It doesn't matter about whether or not you feel better. You might be immune to it, but now you are still you are still outputting that virus if, if you test say, positive. If, if I may say, um, for the couple of places of working that I know about and for the um, school situations that I know about, yeah, um, you're not allowed to go back for at least 14 days after testing. Positive, That's fantastic. Unless, unless you have a negative test. That's fantastic. And that is, I, I honestly, so that is, I that think is, there are that a is lot a pretty of pretty regular policy. Like good. when, when, uh, when, good. when, um, when my son tested positive and I told my, I told my work, my work said, listen, you can either stay out for this much time. Or if you're not symptomatic and you don't have a, you haven't tested positive, you'll have to be not non-symptomatic. You'll have to take a test and it'll have to be a negative test. You can come into work, but you have to wear the N95 mask while you're at work. Yep. Um, and that's the only yep. way that it's going to happen. So you're, you have to have no symptoms, negative test, personally negative test since you've been in the house with somebody with a positive test, and then you can go back to work. And so there, there, the, the thing is, Mike, those policies in most most of these uh social settings like schools jobs whatnot these those there there are policies in place they are taking that into account they are having an a, a, you know 14 day period still 10 to 14 depending most of them are still 14 uh period of waiting and or negative tests to good. be able to come back good so the Things, those things are in place. Those things are being taken care of. Now, whether people are doing that in their personal lives and so far as staying home, not going out, not doing things, you can only you can only control people so far. And at least many businesses, many uh, organizations are at least trying to have that much of control over the, over their personal liability. Because, again, the, the, as much as we want the businesses and the schools and all these things to worry about our safety, what they're really worried about is making sure that they don't have liability for letting people come back too soon. And that being the reason why other people catch things. Good. So. Good. It's not necessarily altruistic, but I'll take, I'll take it if it works, if, right. it, if it is being helpful, even if it's, even if they're doing it just to benefit themselves, if it still benefits uh, others, then I'll take that at least in, in, in the society we're in. Yeah, absolutely. I'm right there with you on it. Um, I'm actually very glad that stuff like that is still in effect. Um, that's, yeah. that's very, that's actually a very comforting thing to hear. I didn't know that because I, you, you see everybody's um everybody's digest of the news is so drastically different and i obviously started looking up covid symptoms at the beginning right because well, i'm wondering also, like what's also, going on I know that uh um though your wife and i work in the same industry she is completely remote where whereas i am only mostly remote in my right. working i do have a requirement of being in uh, being present in the office at least one day a week Unless extenuating circumstances make that not possible, right? Um, as long uh, you know, so I have to worry about 
I have to worry more about that time I have to go in and what policies and procedures are. We have kids and we have to worry about that. We have other people in the household that work in uh, different healthcare situations where healthcare working, uh, healthcare work, schools, those things are going to be more stringent than, than many other places because of the very nature of what they do. I mean, the, the, the company that I work for, uh, many of the, many of the doctors that, I, that work for this company are, uh, internal medicine doctors and infectious disease doctors. Right. So they have a huge amount of experience and they are regularly experiencing whatever outbreaks are happening with, uh, with the various diseases. So um, for instance, my office, is, my office was back on masks um, way before anybody else was because the, our, our, our doctors that were a part of it saw, started to see the uptick ever so slightly, and they reacted immediately to Good. implementing measures again. Good. And so the, that's, that's some of the things that, you know, different, different industries are going to have different standards and different ways of handling things, but it, the, the information is still out there to try to, and the policies are out there to try to curtail things, whether, whether, whether whatever you see in the media or not, what's how ha- what's actually happening in the real world is that they are still having these policies in place in a lot of different places trying to curtail as best as humanly possible uh, and, and most of those in places where they have <laughs> where they have that kind of control yeah again it's very difficult to have them in retail settings to have a certain level of control we saw that throughout all of covid um we've seen that from our experience working in retail controlling customers is just not i mean I don't know how many times I wish I had a cattle prod when I was working in customer <laughs> service. Um, right, right, of course. I will tell you but, this, like, uh, that is something that I, um, that's something I find a lot of comfort in, because like I said, it, especially what, what I was getting at earlier, um, is that everybody has a completely different feed to, they're getting a completely different digest of news, every single individual. Um, and that is nice, because after I started looking up, symptoms how long it's supposed to last what's going on like what should i expect and if and when should i go to the hospital like i'm looking this information up because i want to make like quintuply sure that i am 100 percent like completely on this as much as i possibly can be um and knowing when i need to go to the hospital and all so because i was looking these things up i start getting other information related to it and I'm talking about like things like the CDC uh, bringing back uh, guidelines or or pulling back some guidelines in relation to schools and stuff. But for me to hear from you that there are many places that are still putting this into effect that that are keeping the finger keeping their finger ahead of the pulse of the way that society is working. And how they expect to have things, you know, how they're so eager to jump over that line and be ready to just go run back into, quote unquote, reality or the way things were full force. Um, To know that there is a level of control is, is, that's uh, soothing to me. You know what I mean? It helps. It helps to know that that exists, especially going through the experience, especially knowing and taking as much time as I possibly could to digest everything that was happening to me and everything that I could do to in, to ensure that it didn't happen to my wife and the amount of, I feel like there's a potential that I took probably far more, uh, far more steps and protocols than most people would take in order to ensure that things like that don't happen. And, I am very glad that there are there are institutions beyond what happens in your own house to help curb that. You know what I mean? That that's no, they, there's something soothing about exist. that. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. They and I'm exist. still I'm still dealing with the throat clearing and the cough and like the nasalishness and stuff. That's it, all right. it doesn't go away, man. That hangs with you for a while. But that's like that's fine. <laughs> Like I said, I mean, you basically, okay you basically sound like you do for most of the spring. So, <laughs> right, exactly. So, there's not much of a change to most people that are uh, listening to this podcast or, normally. Or, or if you're hanging out, at, uh, actually, you sound you sound better than if you're hanging out at my house for a little while, and, <laughs> and my cats decide that they want to be your best buddy. Yep, 
Absolutely. Oh God. Could you imagine doing a podcast at your house? I would just be, I would, my entire face would be melting off. It would just be, it it would be, first of all, I'd have to pry you away from our two dogs. Um, that is true because I would love the living hell out of your dogs. Our two dogs are, are, yeah, they're, they're really good dogs. Um, and then I have to pry you away from the sister-in-law's dogs because they're, they're cute little dogs too. Oh. If you got a chance to see them. Um, and then, yeah, it would be, it would be a lot of me yelling at the cats to get away from <laughs> us while we're trying to do the, uh, the, the, the podcast, because normally the cats, uh, one of the cats stays away from me because him and I don't agree with it. Don't agree on things because mm-hmm. he likes to get on things and pee on them. And I don't like that. And so I, <laughs> I use a spray bottle to pee on him and Fair. he doesn't like that. So we are at, we're at uh, odds, him and I, on a, on a pretty regular basis. Um, <laughs> the other cat, him and I could be best buddies. His biggest problem is, I mean, we are best buddies. He's, he's my cat. I just don't like to have him sit on me because he, he has claw issues. And as much as I love him, I'm not going to put up with being clawed. So um, he's a pretty decent foot cat, though. I, I, I do like him as a foot cat. Nice. He'll lay on the he'll lay on the ground by my feet and let me rub him with my feet. So and he's he's not one of those like you can rub his belly, he's not gonna attack you. He's just gonna lay there like a dumbass and take whatever abuse you give him. He doesn't care. <laughs> That's nice. Seriously seriously, most friendly, gigantic fat panther cat ever. But that the yeah, they would both annoy the crap out of you. Um because the, again, they don't. They 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 steer clear of me. Everybody else, they're up in their shit all the time. But anyway, um, so yes, that's why we were gone for a couple of weeks. Mike yep. was dealing with the health issues, and you know, frankly, we got to take those things as as being most important. Our health is is a big deal. We can we can do more podcasts. We can take breaks from podcasts. Uh, health and and life have to take precedence over that. So yeah, we're gonna take a, we're gonna take a break here, and when we come back, Mike did get a chance to finally do something. Uh, <laughs> a I think couple it was before, of things before the the uh, the time off. Or, I no, did, yeah, I did that before, before the time off. Morning. Yes, I did that one before the time off, and then another one was today. So yeah, you did the one. You're you're right. You did do the one before the time off because I was actually I was actually really ticked at you that you got COVID and we couldn't do the 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 <laughs> podcast that day because you had finally finished the one thing I wanted you to finish. Yeah, and I I was raring to go to talk to you about it to uh to tell you the to talk to you about the thing that I have not seen anybody else mention yet about about this series. Oh, really? And I think. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Okay. Absolutely brilliant. Okay. Um, and then we, we may mention small mention of the thing that you, uh, that you finished today. Yeah. Uh, all I'll say is that, that is, it was so Sam Raimi, wasn't it? That was very, you, very dude, Sam Raimi. I swear to God, like the entire, like first two acts were literally just set up for Sam Raimi to go full Sam Raimi in. And he did. And yeah, and he did, and it was so good. It was so but good. It took we'll, so we'll, long we'll, to set up, but it was so good. And we'll we'll touch on that a little bit uh, if we if we can, if I can get the other theory out in a concise way. Okay, so we'll be back in just a moment. All right. Hey, friends, this is Mike from the Zenial Chronicles, reminding you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Zencron, spelled X-E-N-C-H-R-O-N, to keep up to date on all things TXC. And please check out our official website, thezenialchronicles.com, or if that's too much to type, zencron.com. Thanks again for listening, and now, back to the show. And we are back, everybody. All right. So, I've been looking forward to this. For this entire time that we've been off, because I've been wanting to have a discussion about what I feel is out of all of the TV was, series that that uh, Disney has so created for these new properties that they that they gathered up their various Infinity Stones of uh, of childhood uh, loves of mine anyway okay. with with uh, you know their Marvel and their Star Wars and all their properties they're getting the Fox now everything that they've wrangled in. They've made some amazing TV series. I mean, all of the all of the Marvel series I've absolutely loved. Um, actually, I just I was I was just out shopping the other day. I found a wonderful store in the uh, Natomas area of Sacramento. That is a uh, it's 
I, it's called That's Cheap. Have you been to this place? I've heard of it. I heard of it, but I haven't been there. Basically, it's stuff that's no longer carried in stores or overstock stuff or whatever that they just very much like, uh, um, you know, uh, trying to think other stores that do similar where they just they get a big stock of the stuff. They bring it out, you know, still on the pallets. And basically, right. once it's gone, it's gone because they've only got the you know so much stock of it. Kind of like how Grocery Outlet is with certain food items. Oh yeah, okay. I guess it'd be a way to to describe it. And I was able to pick up for uh, two dollars each uh, a four um, four Funko Pop set uh, from the Hawkeye uh, Marvel series. So I got Hawkeye. Oh, cool. I got um, Yelena, who's uh, Black Widow's uh, sister. Um, oh, cool. I got, uh, oh God, what's her name? Uh, Maya, who's, uh, kind of new. She's kind of a bad guy, but is actually going to be in her own series. Uh, Echo. She okay. is a, uh, she's an interesting Marvel character in that she's missing a leg. She has a prosthetic leg and she's also deaf. Oh, Okay. So she's a bad guy in the Hawkeye series, but I think that, that they're kind of giving her her own spinoff to, I don't know exactly what is going to happen, but she is an actual char- comic character, Echo, that has those same uh, exact physical issues, and more importantly, is also somebody of Native American descent, and the actress is as well. Okay, okay. So That's kind cool. of almost, she she literally was the perfect fit actress for this comic book role because it is a comic book character that is yeah. missing a leg and is deaf. And this is this woman is, and is Native American, and she is Native American, missing a leg, and deaf. And so... Whoa, wait, the like, actress is all of those things? Yes, the actress is all of those things. Holy shit, okay, yeah, that's pretty... That's, wow, that's on there. And so, wow. uh, uh, and she's, she, it was the first thing she's ever done for acting. She did a pretty damn good job for her first time ever. acting. Wow. And okay. then, um, and then my, one of my favorite characters from Hawkeye, one of my favorite new introduction characters, Kate Bishop, who's the kind of the main protagonist of the Hawkeye series. Um, oh, cool. she's kind of his, his protege. Yeah. Uh, and interestingly, uh, Hawkeye is going deaf in the series as well. It's, uh, uh, that's a major, the deafness is kind of a big plot point. Oh, with, with various things going on. But anyway, um, it's one of those, it's one of those moments. Hawkeye's deafness is a result of all of the shit that he's been through as an Avenger. Oh, okay. All the explosions he's been near and all mm-hmm. of that. It, he, his body is physically torn up and he's going deaf, almost completely deaf at this point because he's a normal person. He's not enhanced. He's not wearing some mechanical suit or anything. He's just a normal dude that shoots arrows at robots and in a flying city. Um, wow. And okay. so the, you know, his body is beat all to hell as a result of all the things that he's done. And for those people who try to say that the Marvel movies don't necessarily show the aftermath of what, of what these people have been through. Oh yes. He has, he has the aftermath. His body's beat. He's, he's scarred. He's bruised. He's, he's got joints that don't work right. And again, losing his hearing as a result of everything. Great show, but I got I got four little pops from that, and I, I love that show. I love all the stuff that they put out for Marvel, all the stuff they put out for Star Wars. But at this point, the one that stands head and shoulders above them, the one I've been waiting for, was the Obi Wan series. <laughs> to see you and McGregor come back and play Obi Wan, and admittedly, yeah, uh, you know, I, I grew up on four, five, and six, and Sir Alec Guinness, one of the best actors ever in cinema, to to have taken that part, a part he hated. A part he 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 decried for for the rest of his life. Um, interestingly, apparently he he even outside of being a Jedi, just in normal life, Alec Guinness was able to uh, use the Force and see the future because he did predict uh, James Dean's death at the hands of the uh, vehicle that James Dean died in. Wait, um, what? Interesting, interesting piece of trivia. Oh, yes. Uh, he he told Alec Guinness actually saw James Dean in the car that he ended up crashing and dying in Holy and shit. told him that he needed to get rid of that car because he was, it was going to kill him. Holy shit. And it did. So that was some mad real life Jedi shit. Unlike you and McGregor who, uh, pretends to use the force to open doors in like supermarkets. <laughs> and shit. Hey, who fucking doesn't man. 
Yeah, but you, but when you and McGregor does it, could you imagine walking into a supermarket and or just walking out of the supermarket? And you see you and McGregor outside using his hand to do it. I, I mean, I'd like to think I, I would maintain myself fairly decently around most celebrities, <laughs> but that one I might fall on the ground and be laughing because that's just that's just hilarious. That's just a moment. And yes, it everybody is. does it. You and McGregor's got to be careful doing that shit. It's just like you can't go around saying hello there to everybody. He's got to be careful with that shit. That's a superpower. <laughs> but I was waiting to see this, waiting to see, you know, what part of the story that they would tell. And moreover, I was hoping to see what I felt was the thing that we were a little bit robbed with, with episode three. And that is, uh, I, I, what I wanted, what I always wanted episode three to be was Vader chasing down the entire movie, Vader chasing down the Jedi and, and eliminating the Jedi, right? not the last, you know, third of the movie where he raises the Jedi temple. And even that, even his, his raising of the Jedi temple, you get the, the, the scene with the, where he's walking in with the five Oh first. Um, and that's pretty neat scene, pretty neat setup. Good shot. Yeah. You get the, you get the scene with the, in the, in the room with the younglings where like at that moment, I don't know if you know from episode three, but in that moment when he's in the room with the younglings and he ignites his lightsaber yeah. as Anakin, his lightsaber has a specific sound when it ignites. But at that exact moment, they use the ignition sound from Darth Vader's lightsaber from four, five and six. I did not know that. Yeah. It's a, it's a very slightly different sound. It's one of those things that only, that only like hardcore nerds are going to know. I was going to say it's just a that sound. tiny little Easter egg, but it does, it has all of the heft that it should at that point. And, How interesting. You know, there are people that, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say that's, that's, that's interesting. I didn't know that at all. Well, and there are people that like, that's like their least favorite scene in the entire thing. And that's good. Cause it should be your least favorite thing and scene in the entire thing. Um, well, right. It's, it's say now, brutal. It's, it's like, it's supposed to be uncomfortable. Well, and, and it leads you into it, it. It alludes to the brutality of what he's going to do without actually being brutal. Right. Which, which leads me into how this Obi-Wan series starts. And so at this point, people, there are going to be some spoilers. The series has been out. Hopefully people have seen it. Anybody listening to this, will have seen it. There's going to, we're going into spoiler territory. Sorry. You got a deal. <laughs> we, know, we know, of course, we know, of course, that Obi-Wan and, uh, and Darth Vader are going to live because they have to, because they have to meet again in episode four and Obi-Wan get killed at that point. Right. Sorry for a spoiler from a movie from 1977. Um, but, uh, I, I'm going to get into some spoiler territory with some of this. Cause there's, there's things I want to talk about that are awesome. And then I want to talk about something that they did with this entire series that again, I don't think anybody else has mentioned this. I've watched a lot of analysis of this series mm-hmm. and I haven't heard anybody mention this one yet. And I don't know how many people have noticed this. So. As I'm, as I'm sure you were when you sat down to watch this series, it opens up on the skyline of Coruscant, the capital city. Right. The capital planet city. The whole, the whole planet's a city, basically. And I noticed it immediately. I, I even told my wife, that, that's Coruscant. What the hell is going on here? Mm-hmm. And as, it, as the camera kind of moves down, you're seeing Coruscant, you're seeing Coruscant, and suddenly you see a group of younglings uh-huh. that are practicing. And I don't know, how, how long did it take you? When did the moment hit you that you knew what you were watching? Oh, as soon as I saw the younglings, I was just like, holy shit, this is opening with the massacre. Yeah. It was immediate. It you was see- immediate. I was like, oh, no fucking way. They're, do- they're starting here? They're starting okay, we're down 66. for the ride. Let's go. Because I knew this series was going to be darker than what those films put out. and completely understandably so they're adding that extra heft that um i feel should have been in those movies in the 90s that was that was the thing that was missing from those three films was the fact that um it's almost like lucas was too busy trying to uh appeal to the younger audience to kids uh and yeah people's kids versus the fact that it was 20 year olds that went and saw the first batch of films in 1977 so these these people are pushing like 40 50 at this time no 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 and i think i think the thing is if you go back and watch four five and six you'll see that while they're while they keep things light enough that kids can watch them 
they're not they're not too kitty too cartoony and i think the one of the mistakes made with episodes one two and three was they went a little too cartoony right and even seven eight nine um up until the last scene of nine they didn't go too cartoony and that's where i think i think i think if they had dialed back some of that cartoony uh and and put a little more gravitas in one two and three yeah we have a completely different opinion of of them but yeah you open with order 66 and order 66 has been used as a touch-off point for a lot of things lately um there is a flashback to order 66 from grogu's point of view in mm-hmm. the mandalorian series grogu oh. the little uh yoda creature yeah he he has a uh, at one point when he encounters luke in the mandalorian series sorry series been out you should know luke appears um <laughs> Luke, when he's when he's uh, communicating mentally with um, Luke, actually Luke and Ahsoka Tano, when they're communicating mentally with um, Grogu, they do get uh, flashes of Order sixty six and some of the people that might have protected uh, Grogu, because Grogu was at the Jedi Temple when Order sixty six happened, right? And somebody got him out, but we still don't know exactly who for sure. Oh, um, the last season of the Clone Wars. Uh, which was, which got made way after the series ended. They went back and were able to make the last season of it. You actually see the moment where Anakin and Obi-Wan leave to go to Coruscant to the opening of episode three and leave Ahsoka Tano to capture Darth Maul, who, yes, at that point was still alive, to capture Darth Maul on uh, Mandalore during, the, during his occupation of Mandalore because for a while uh, Darth Maul kind of took over Mandalore. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, where the Mandalorians come from. Uh-huh. Um, and she captures Darth Maul, has him on a Jedi uh, star cruiser heading back towards Coruscant when Order 66 happens. And she ends up, her Captain Rex, who she's able to get the inhibitor chip, the chip inside the clone's brains that make them do Order 66. Uh-huh. Um, she gets the inhibitor chip out of him, and her and Captain Rex basically have to fight off Half of the 501st, which Anakin sent with her, the other half is what he assaulted the Jedi Temple with, mm, but okay. he sent half with her. So her and Captain Rex, who's a major major clone figure of the, he's a clone soldier yeah. for the entire Clone Wars TV series, they have to fight off an entire Jedi frigate full of clones. Wow. That are trying to kill her and kill him as a result of, her, of him protecting her. And Darth Maul helps them at some point. Um, oh, because they they break Darth Maul out so that they can help them. They end up they end up basically crashing the ship, the the Jedi Star Cruiser. They crash it on a planet, and there's a sequence of them having to fight their way out of the ship as it is crashing through the atmosphere and escape from the ship. And Damn. Ahsoka and Captain Rex survive. They both appear in the Rebels TV series later. Um, and in the Rebels TV series, you have a former Padawan, um, Caleb Dune, who goes by the name uh, Kanan Jarrus at that point. And he survived Order 66 because his, uh, his master, his Jedi master, basically protected him and told him to run. You actually get to see that scene for the new TV, the new animated series, um, oh gosh, Bad Batch. Oh, which, okay. is an, which is a, about a group of, of clones that were considered defective clones because the Kaminoans were trying to breed certain traits into the clone instead of making them just straight clones. They were trying to uh-huh. bring certain things out. The idea, of course, being that they were trying to find a way to create force sensitivity in clones that Palpatine would use later to clone his body again. So uh... it all does fit. There is backstory behind all of this. Good Lord. And okay. it will be introduced. But anyway... Yes, the Obi-Wan series opens on Order 66, and it is as brutal as you would expect it to be. And it goes back to it multiple times throughout the series, which I think is amazing. Right. They add that extra level, and they give you more context to what was a very, very short thing that happened in, the, in Episode 3. They, give, they flesh it out more and add more to it. But that's, that, you know, that's, that's one piece, and it's a good piece. Um, you then, you then go see Obi-Wan who's, you know, hanging out on Tatooine. That's the first episode, right? He's hanging out on Tatooine, yeah. hanging out in the sand on Tatooine. Um, you got, you got Owen, uh, which I love the fact that they were able to bring back the actor for Owen and the actress for, uh, Baru 
from episode uh, two and three. That to you play know what, him again to give to give that like I want to give major props to them for getting everyone that they. I don't think yeah. there's an there wasn't an actor that I didn't recognize from a previous portion. Um, that didn't ha- that well, hadn't the, taken it over except for the third sister, but because she wasn't in it, but. The third sister? Fifth sister? Whatever number of sister she was, wasn't she the third sister? The Inquisitor. The main the main bad guy. Oh, right. Wait, so hold on, because she didn't have another part in one of the previous movies, did she? No, no, she didn't exist, so. Okay, right. No, yeah, but, uh, but yeah. what I'm saying, like, everybody who had a part in the movies in the 90s, bringing them back in, like, as far as I could tell, as far as I could recognize... Everyone that I could recognize from the 90s movies being in the series added that much more um, ability to insert yourself within the story because of everyone you recognized. Yeah, because you can't have Bail Organa come back if it's not Jimmy Smith's playing Bail Organa. No, dude, that just won't work. Yeah, exactly. That won't work. You need need to use some Jimmy Schmidt. Um, (laughs) And and that's good. Um, You get to see, you, you do get to see Alderaan finally, which is awesome. Which is yeah, awesome. I mean, I like I like being able to finally see Alderaan instead of it being you know, uh, you, well, I mean, you got a small shot of Alderaan in episode three where uh, where um, Leia is brought to Alderaan and given and given to uh, um, Bail Organa's wife, and you know, hey, look, we got a kid now, yay! Yeah, you know, you get a little bit of that, but um, so the other bit, one of the other big spoilers that has already been released everywhere is the fact that um. The other major protagonist in this series is Leia as of a little course. girl. Yes. And she's freaking amazing. Hilarious little girl. I thought she was great. Um, I thought she was, they, they, they did an incredible job casting the right person for that role. Like that little girl was, she was, she was awesome. Charisma for days. Be- man. And believable as hell as, uh, yes. as a young Carrie Fisher, as a little kid, Carrie Fisher. Totally yeah, believable. Absolutely. I thought she was fantastic. Um, and fucking okay, I I absolutely loved seeing Flea. By the way, that was it was that was a I think great that was, part for him. Yeah, that was one of those situations like uh, how Daniel Craig was a stormtrooper in uh, in Episode Seven. Yeah, and um and Kevin Smith was a was a voice in Episode Seven. Uh, Simon Pegg was a uh, was a character in Episode Seven. Um, Wasn't Bill Hader have, BB-8 too? Huh. Bill Hader helped help create the voice of BB-8, right? Bill Hader was BB-8. Um, I, uh, oh gosh, I can't think of the actress's name, but she was in uh, the Harry Potter movie. She was Mo- Moaning Myrtle. Um, Shirley something, Shirley Henderson, that's her name. Hmm. She was uh, Babu Frick in the in Episode Nine. Um, oh, cool. Okay. The app- apparently Prince Prince Harry and Prince, uh, um, what's the other prince? The William? other British prince, William. William yeah, and Harry, they yeah. were both uh, stormtroopers in episode. Nine. Ah, that's great. That's great. Um, so y- you you have those you have some some cameo instances like that. Uh, Greg Grunberg being put into uh, the three newer movies because he's best friends with J.J. Abrams. He's in all <laughs> of J.J. Abrams stuff. Um, yeah, but Flea's you know, Flea's role moments. was multi episode, so it was at least over what two episodes, and he had like FaceTime, like you saw him. And he no, had, and it was it was it was a fun role for him yeah. to have, but also an expected role when you think about kind of the stuff uh, that that Flea does. And sadly, oh, for sure, gets his. yeah, Flea was Flea got to be Flea in Star Wars. Like that's what he that's the role he played, and then got to be dead. So sorry for Flea, but <laughs> hey, why not? Um, but but again, you start episode one, you see Obi Wan on Tatooine, right? Yeah, Obi Wan, Tatooine in the sand. You get <laughs> we just episode barely two, have gotten and... into this. <laughs> hmm? We've just what? barely gotten into this. I love it. We've been no, talking no, about it for is, twenty I, minutes. I, I'm getting to. I'm getting to this. I'm punctuating points along the way. You get episode two. Okay. And episode two, he's he's trying to find Leia because she's been kidnapped. He goes to this. He goes to this area where there's like uh, kind of a seedy city area, lots of lights, neon, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Neon City, right? We can we can use that as kind of an example. That's a good word to describe kind of where Neon City, at, very kind of yeah, city very seedy. It looks very um, it, to me the first thing I thought of was it looked very Blade Runner, very Blade Runner, very Akita, like Neo Tokyo type shit. 
Okay. I can see that. And that makes perfect sense. Um, <laughs> so, and that, that, that episode, that episode, you get like, you get a couple of moments where like, I personally was very emotional. Um, Obi-Wan's been distanced from the force so that he can't be found through the force. He's not accessed it. He's not used. Right. It feels like he, you know, he failed. More importantly, more importantly, as far as he knows and as far as he is concerned, he left his brother, the you know, somebody that he loved to die next to a, you know, a giant river of lava. The dude caught on fire and he was dead and you walked away from him. And, yeah, that was and it. then his other good friend who he had, who he had done tons of adventures with died giving birth to the kids of the two friends. So he's been watching over this you know, he's been watching over his best friend's kid, uh, almost like, you know, it's like his nephew or grandkid or something. You know what I mean? He's mm -hmm. just, and he's been, he's cut himself off from any of this and he has to, to save his best friend's other kid from dying. He's got to tap into the force again. And when he has that moment, where he touches the force again. It's like, oh, dang, this is awesome. I'm seeing him use the force again. And that you think that's the killer thing in there, but then you get a moment late, uh, a few minutes later, where he's watching this young little Leia try to order things around and take control of the situation, and all he can think of is Padme, who, if you've watched yeah. the Clone Wars series like I have, um, if you, if you just watch the movies, you don't know the depth of the relationship. If you've watched the Clone Wars series, the three years of war that happen of of the clone wars you get to see how close anakin and obi-wan were and get to see how close even obi-wan and padme were not in a romantic way but like in a friendship way where they relied on each other and trusted each other and they were part right. of a little family and all he can see is his his you know his friend again in this little girl she's exactly like her mother having never known her mother and it reminds him completely you get that moment of like, oh man, what what have you lost, Obi-Wan? And here's kind of the interesting parallel of all of this. You have Anakin who th who lost all of these things by his own actions of, you know, fucking things up and being a dick. <laughs> but Obi-Wan lost all the same things that Anakin lost. And did Obi-Wan turn evil? No. Admittedly, he went into hiding like a little whiny bitch. But he didn't turn to evil. So you think that's going to be the emotional moment, right? You think that's going to be like, the, wow, okay. Right. But no. You get the emotional moment of the, the, the Inquisitor, the third sister, reveals that one. Now, this, this is an interesting reveal on multiple levels. She reveals that, that Anakin Skywalker is still alive as Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. Obi-Wan doesn't know this. And Obi-Wan gets the moment. You see the moment where Obi-Wan's like, what? He's still alive? Yeah. How is he still alive? And he thought he was dead. You know, he thought he was dead the entire time. And now it's like suddenly, oh crap, he didn't die. He's still alive. But me, being the, the, the nerd that I am, <laughs> I have that moment of clarity that Obi-Wan doesn't get for a couple more episodes. I have that moment of clarity of how the hell does she know that he's Anakin Skywalker? Because no, he let nobody ah. know that. Nobody yeah. knew who Darth Vader was. He, if he found out somebody knew who he was, he would kill them. He killed, he killed Jocasta New, who was the librarian for the Jedi Temple, and an entire ship of his own clone troopers. When Jocasta New outed him as Anakin Skywalker, he killed her, killed the whole ship, so that nobody would know. This is like, Vader does not want anybody to know that he was Anakin at any point in time. Is this, so uh, how I'm, does, I'm assuming, how does is she this know? Clone Wars or Rebels that you're talking about? What? Is this Clone Wars or Rebels that you're talking about? That sounds uh, like a serious the, thing. This is in the comic books. This is in the comic books. The, wait, 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 wait. This hold is... on, hold on, hold on. We're talking, is this like Legends comic books or Disney era comic Modern. books? Modern there's comics. a set of comic books that are canonical? Oh, yeah, there's there's a bunch of stuff. There's stuff about uh, about um, uh, Ben uh, Ben Solo's life and Ben Solo when he's, when he's still... Uh, Luke's apprentice. There's a whole series on that. There's a whole series no about shit. Vader right now. Um, in one of the Vader series, or actually in the Vader series, Vader teams up with one of Padme's old uh, handmaidens to go exact some revenge on some shit about other. I forget exactly what happens because I haven't read them all. But like he teams up with one of her old handmaidens to like go go and fuck some shit up. Oh wow! Seriously, yeah. There's there's a whole comic life still that's 
canon, not just the old like Dark Horse stuff. All the old. No, this is current canon, current stuff that's that's fleshing out the the Star Wars lore even more. And in that, he does encounter Jocasta New. He kills her for outing him as as Anakin, and kills all the the troopers that are with him that that heard that he was Anakin. So wow. for this this for this Inquisitor to know, it confirmed my suspicion. Which again. Spoiler, she's one of the younglings in the very first scene. Right. That, uh, and she doesn't die in Order 66. She escapes. I had a feeling that that was her. When I saw her and then I saw her as the Inquisitor, I'm like, that's the youngling. I had a feeling that's what it was and that's why she knew. But um, the geek in me is like, she should not know that that's Anakin. So she, she definitely has to be. My, can, my suspicions are confirmed. She has to be the youngling because nobody else is going to know that he's Anakin. No way in hell. He's not how does she him, get even the inquisitors aren't going to know that shit. My question is, how does she get so far in to working with the empire and getting to be able to have like be face to face with him and he doesn't discover or know or anything? He did. Nobody did know, though. He knew the whole time. He reveals that he reveals that. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. He he does, and basically, yeah. he was manipulating her the entire time. He was using well, uh, that. He, yeah, he was using he was using yeah. her anger and her hatred to uh, to suit his ends until it no longer suited his ends. Because he had right, 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 is, right, right, right. He had absolutely no fear about being able to defeat her. Another thing that happens in the comic books is he he kills he kills and names inquisitors on a regular basis. He doesn't joke around. The only one who doesn't yeah. get killed and maimed on a raid, uh, doesn't really get killed and maimed is the Grand Inquisitor. He dies later. Um, he dies actually in the Clone Wars TV series. Ah, um, uh, okay. But, uh, but no, he's, uh, he's locking it down. He knows what's going on. You're not going to fool him in those things. And he's just going to use you until you're of no more use. And then he'll just kill you because he's got no, absolutely no worry whatsoever of you being able to hurt him. You're not going to hurt him. None of the Inquisitors are strong enough to come even close to hurting him, even in the state that he is in, being half machine. Wow. Okay. So you get to the you get to the third episode, right? Yeah. See, oh my god, this has been such a such a long uh <laughs> such a long thing we've been waiting for. I, I I forget what my reference is in the in the third episode. And so give me a moment as I as I go back and research. Because I have these, there's moments from each episode that are important to kind of uh, acknowledge in what I'm in, in this kind of thing I'm trying to build. <laughs> okay. Sorry, he's got, oh, guys, yes, he's got yes, to bust yes. out his notebook on this. Give him one moment. Third, third episode, right? Right. You finally get the, you finally get the first of multiple, the first of multiple encounters where. Darth Vader actually comes face to face again with Obi Wan. Uh, him and Leia have escaped from the Neon City planet. They escape to another planet. Bunch of different shenanigans happening. Um, Obi Wan not being a very good liar and screwing shit up. Um, they end up. There's a couple of good voice cameos in that too. The driver of the truck that's driving them around. Right. Um, I forget who that who that is. It's not Seth Rogen, even though it sounds like him. It's somebody else. Can't remember who the actor is, but um, actually I can look it up right here because I have my thing in front of me. But the key here is you meet an imperial spy. Oh, it's Zach Braff. That's oh, Zach Braff yeah, 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 yeah. You meet an imperial spy, somebody who's working, who's working for the empire, but is actually uh, is actually working for the rebellion, the the beginning of the rebellion. Mm -hmm. Um, you see a. She gets them into a hidden room, which has a lot of all this stuff on the walls. Oh my God. There's so much deep lore on the walls, including, uh, really? Quinlan Voss, who is a, uh, Quinlan Voss, a Jedi who, um, pretty badass Jedi, but he, he was one of those that skirted near the edge of going into the dark side. He actually ends up teaming up with Asajj Ventress at, at one point or another to try to kill uh, Dooku. He's, he ends up being turned to the dark side. A lot of, a lot of stuff happens with him, but there's uh, stuff written by him in there. There's a lot of, of cool lore stuff, cool little tidbits written on the walls in that room. Um, you eventually come to getting uh, at the end of this, this 
episode, you get a confrontation between uh, Vader and and Obi Wan, and Vader's basically just toying around with Obi Wan the entire time. He's coming on aggressive as hell, and Obi Wan is just doing his best to stay alive at this point because he's not fully back in touch with the Force. He's not fully back into himself. He's still a you know sad, pathetic old man that he you know doesn't know what to think of this friend of his now who. You know, he cared about is now just this kind of death killing robot thing. And you have this this amazing moment where it's messed up an amazing moment where basically Obi Wan gets set on fire in a sense, drugged through fire. Oh right? yeah. And burns. Oh yeah. So dude, that was so the, we, the the presentation of the entire scene in and of itself was just brutal as hell. It's it was that's very, that's one of the things brutal. that I loved about it was just the themes of it. Like it skirts this level of it's it it it, it so finely skirts that toes the line to certain levels of uh, of violence that that exude a severe amount of gravitas to it. Like you don't know how bad it's gonna get in in, in a yeah. few in a few instances. Um, throughout the series, I saw this with a few, with a few examples. Um, probably some of the ones that you're going to mention later as well. Like there's ones that stick out to me that are like a sore thumb that are just like holy shit. But this was one of those. This was an oh shit moment for me. It and was. the amount of the intentional. I love what I loved about that scene specifically was just the you could you could taste the hatred and the torture that was that was being projected on obi-wan in that moment you knew oh, vader, yeah. that vader was looking to enjoy every second of watching him burn to a crisp you wanted you, you knew that he wanted it yeah you let me burn i'm gonna make you burn and right he's able obi-wan's able to escape leia is captured and this is this is important leia is captured and obi-wan escapes right end of the episode basically uh yeah next, yeah next episode next episode Obi Wan gets him back to healing next episode Obi Wan has to uh with his new Imperial spy person mm -hmm. he he ends up having to go to and a few other people to help him out he ends up having to go to the uh, Inquisitor base right the Inquisitor's base yes to rescue Leia who's about to be tortured all to hell which I'm sure is another one of those moments that's pretty intense when she's <laughs> almost about to be tortured this little this little little kid is about to go through some like hardcore it seems torture dude yeah she ain't going to give up any information right and so Obi-Wan's got to go in there and, and and rescue her you see a Jedi graveyard which uh by the way again one of the canon things in this in the animated series in the comics whatever dead jedis were actually used to lure in live jedis for the inquisitors and the uh the clones to catch and kill oh wow okay no yeah mm -hmm. um in fact and there is one dead jedi who appears in there who actually um in the clone wars series had uh a couple of episodes where he worked with Ahsoka Tano when she left the Jedi Order. Um, but anyway, the, the key to this episode is Obi-Wan goes to base uh, to save Leia. Okay? Okay. Okay. He, he, he's able to save Leia. They lose some people in the process, but he's able to save Leia. There's a, couple of, there's a lot of good pieces in there, including uh, you know, Vader showing up late and... Um, Almost killing people, but then not, which is always fun. Right. Um, then you get, then you get episode five, part five, as it were, where, yes. um, they are, uh, Obi-Wan is with Leia, hold up with these, uh, with these rebels. They have, uh, the empire is found out by, um, by attaching a, uh, by attaching a, tracker to leia's little floating robot toy right they've attached a tracker they're able to find out where the base is okay okay empires descending upon the base you have um some major action sequences of the uh stormtroopers and the uh the third sister trying to uh to break into the base you have a moment where Obi Wan finally realizes, "Oh, you were a youngling. That's how you know. You've <laughs> right. been, you, you've been, you've been 
after Vader this whole time. Okay, so he try he being the great negotiator, you finally see him be the negotiator, which he was very much in the Clone Wars series, but you see him be the negotiator and is able to trick her into uh basically bring Vader down to the to the planet. They they go to make an escape. You have one of the best oh god, one of the best scenes ever of their ship escaping and Vader Unlike in, unlike when Ahsoka Tano tries to stop Darth Maul from leaving the crashing, uh, the crashing Jedi starfighter at the end of the Clone Wars series, and she's just barely able to hold the ship from flying away, and finally it does. Darth Maul escapes, or um, where it takes like a huge amount of concentration for um, Star Killer, uh, Darth Vader's apprentice in the Force Unleashed games, to bring a Star Destroyer uh, crashing down. It takes it takes him like an insane amount of concentration to do it. Yeah. Vader just reaches out his hand, Dude. grabs the ship, yes. and throws it to the ground. It was it was an oh that was the second oh shit moment to me. It's just I, I just I I remembered looking at it and going, Dude, he ain't even fucking trying. He just goes, boom, boom. Okay. Like it takes seconds for him to slam that bitch right back down onto the ground. It was nothing. Like, yeah, it's like, okay, but then of course Obi-Wan knows that's going to happen, so he escapes. Um, right, didn't it? Wasn't it a, like it was a decoy showdown. ship or something like that? Huh? Wasn't it a decoy ship or something like that? Yeah, the, the first yeah. one was a decoy. Cause, cause well done, o- by the way. O- Obi-Wan Absolutely well. Knows great great little enough. twist, I thought. And, the, and then you have Reva finally, the, the third sister finally trying to, uh, to take out uh, Vader, and Vader just literally barely works to defeat her oh yeah he and, kicks the shit out reveals of her. He, he reveals that he knew the entire time who she was and yeah. that's why like i said he had no fear what i didn't mention was probably the most amazing opening scene in this in this episode the thing that kind of stopped everybody which was hayden in and ewan in episode two look yeah exactly in episode two look at the Jedi Temple, having a duel that it starts with that, and then it comes back to the duel throughout the episode. Like the duel, the duel they're having then is basically the same duel they're having throughout this episode, except mentally instead of physically. And I'm just going to say, other than Hayden obviously being older because he obviously is, still amazing to get back into. He 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 looked like Anakin. He moved like Anakin. Everything was yep. Anakin and Obi Wan. Same thing. Yun was Obi Wan. That fight sequence was just brilliant and amazing, and it shows it, it fleshes out. I think the world of Episode Two because you know it's happening within that same time period, and it's fleshing that out. You don't know if it's happening if it happened before Episode Two or directly. Actually, it's, it's before because it can't be after. Yeah. Anakin still has both of his hands. So this is before episode two, and it's fleshing that out even further, giving mm-hmm. that episode two even more depth. Just like all of the flashbacks to the Order 66 is adding depth to episode three. Yeah. So, but what you have for the overarching thing of this is you have the Empire uh, finds a rebel base, and the rebels escape, right? Yes. Empire finds base. Rebels escape. Rebels escape. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now you have a, you, now you have six, right? Part six, right? And part six, I, I could spend an entire uh, podcast episode talking about the the battle that happens, but because uh, that's, I mean, there's cutting back and forth between uh, the third sister go, go, going after third sister having found out about uh, about at least the existence of uh of luke and going to tatooine to try to uh try to basically take out luke um and uh and owen and beru doing a great job trying to fit her off as best as possible for just being owen and beru um, <laughs> yeah no they were actually and, pretty kick-ass too oh they beru beru was like i'm throwing this shit down this is my kid i'm, I'm, I'm yeah my yeah kid. she was all over it man um but you have this you have this uh this this knockdown drag out battle between Obi-Wan and Darth Vader. This is the just like that 
that 45 seconds that you got at the end of Rogue One, that people like me who was waiting to see why Darth Vader was so feared, why he was such a badass. Yeah. Admittedly, you got a little bit of it in in the in the third episode here with the, the third the third uh, part here where you know the where Obi Wan was burning at the end as Vader's walking down that street looking for Obi Wan and he's just randomly choking people out, just randomly killing people that aren't that aren't oh, helping him. Oh, dude. It's just, walking down the street that shows how how vicious and evil he is but this fight is fight in the sixth part of this is the fight that you this is as much as people may want to may have wanted to try to talk up or talk down the battle at the end of episode three this is so much more this yeah this has more emotion more power more everything to it yeah, I, you know I, I, mean? I agree. Absolutely. I completely agree. I was actually blown out by how much um, I was blown out by how intense it actually got. Um, I loved the way that the whole fight itself was laid out, um, but I well, was what surprised I, what I love at, from a geek standpoint. Yeah, from, from, from kind of the geek standpoint is um, Obi-Wan doesn't fight with his normal fighting style. He actually changes up his fighting style and fighting this battle. I was curious about and... that. Go ahead. I was going to say, I was actually curious about that. I wanted to know what your take was on this because from everything I saw, there was just so much more, uh, o- Obi-Wan's I felt fighting like this style fight was is, so much more a... force oriented, like just mm-hmm. full bore. Like, yeah, it, it, it uh, reminded me somewhat of the, um, it reminded me somewhat of the Yoda v. Dooku fight, where they're playing with force powers back and forth before shit really starts to hit the fan and the lightsabers come out. But this was kind of like done in a almost a reverse order, like to a degree. Actually, it was all kind of like intermingled and integrated all at once. It, it's like what you expect a real Jedi battle to be. You know exactly. This is this yeah. is what I've been looking for 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 a full on Jedi battle. And you're talking one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, well, one of the most powerful Jedi because technically Anakin was the most powerful. Yeah, and um and like three quarters of Anakin going going at this. And again, Obi Wan style typically the style that he that he trained in was best known as a defense style. Yeah, which is the reason why he was he was the perfect person to to uh, go up against General Grievous and four lightsabers. Is his specific style is basically designed so you can be surrounded by people shooting at you with blasters and be able to deflect every blaster shot that comes at you because it's a pure, it's almost a purely defensive style, and the only attacks are minute counterattacks based on the your blocking scheme. Yeah, you wear down the opponent. This is not a. Yeah. Yeah. This is this you is not an aggressive style opponent. in it's, any way. It's fucking. It's 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 the Muhammad Ali philosophy. Like that's what he which, did. Which is which is one of the reasons why, uh, for instance, in the episode three fight, um, it goes on for as long as it does because Anakin's is a very uh, aggressive style of fighting. Yeah. And so Anakin's aggression and attack with Obi Wan's defense, it just basically would keep running in circles interestingly yeah. there's a moment in the clone wars series where uh um anakin and uh obi-wan are fighting dooku mm-hmm. and the way that they animate this uh this um specific fight dooku purposely uh isolates the two of them as he's attacking and he uses a style against anakin that makes anakin be defensive because he's he uses weaker a style at it. against against obi-wan that makes obi-wan have to be more aggressive right one of the things that one of the things that in the lore count dooku was very well known for was his uh ability as a very cerebral lightsaber combatant he used his, he used his his brain for fighting as much as his skill and his specific skill style was a very elegant form of lightsaber combat and so to be able to realize what each of their styles were, what their main styles were, and to basically have them have to do the opposite of their main styles kept them off guard right. and made him have an easier time at it. So this is, you have Vader stepping into this fight expecting, uh, you know, Obi-Wan to be on the defensive and Obi-Wan goes straight onto the aggressive. Right. Um, you have the moment where, you know, Obi-Wan is lost, buried at the bottom of a, a pile of rocks, which is, uh, it, it's, you know basically the same as him vader leaving him to die under the pile of rocks just like uh obi-wan left him to die right but 
Obi-Wan comes back out. Uh, you have the completion of the fight, and you get one half of uh, Vader's mask destroyed. And yeah. more important, most importantly, you get the sound cue, the breathing sound cue from when his armor is failing and yeah. his, his breathing system is failing at the end of Return of the Jedi. Same exact, they use the exact same sound. Yes. So you, you have Vader's mask, masked, uh, unmasked, basically, and breathing difficulties, right? Yep. The breathing sound. Yep. Um, interesting to note, in the Clone Wars series, um, not in the Clone Wars, sorry, in the Rebel series, Ahsoka ends up in a fight with Vader, not knowing that, it, that Vader is Anakin when she's in the fight with him. Mm -hmm. She breaks the right side of his mask off. In doing so, she sees that it's Anakin underneath. Ah. And she has the moment of realization that that's Anakin. Obi-Wan breaks the left side of his mask. Ah. This was done intentionally. And it's also the moment where Obi-Wan realizes Anakin is dead. That is not Anakin anymore. That is only Vader. Right. And he calls him Vader. But the key here is broken mask, right? The breathing right. sound. Right. So, kind of a quick synopsis. Everybody needs to see it, especially for that fight. I've watched that fight like five times. It's I was so going to say, I've only seen it once, but I do want to revisit taking a look at it because that shit was just, it was bombastic as hell. It was, it was just so large it was yes. so much larger than i expected it to be especially like i was i went into this series wondering where the hell they were gonna go especially now when you look at the fight with obi-wan and darth vader in episode four it's so much tinier but obi-wan it, it gives you context where obi-wan's purpose is just to be a distraction to get the kids out. He knew he was going to die when he got onto that ship. He knew he was done, which is why he gave up, which is why he he surrendered to Vader at the end of that fight. Um and it gives you Well, and that has to do that has to do with what you see at the very very end of this episode, which is big spoiler, the Force Ghost of Qui-Gon Jinn, yeah, who has who has learned to transcend through the Force beyond life right and be able to force project which is what he teaches to yoda eventually and obi-wan right um so he's the one that but, learns how to do that right he's the one that learns how and then everyone else has the capability of doing it after qui-gon teaches it to them which again is touched on in a later episode of the clone wars when yoda finds out oh, that qui-gon has learned how to do this oh okay yes clone wars God, is worth clone watching wars people God. But here's the theory Here's the theory. Here's the theory. Okay. Okay. So episode one, we, we find, we have to, we see a bunch of action, right? But then we have to find, right. uh, we find Obi-Wan hidden away somewhere on Tatooine, right? Uh -huh. So you got, you got, you know, somebody that could be force sensitive, but isn't anymore hiding on Tatooine. Okay. Found on Tatooine. Very much like how, Anakin was found on Tatooine in episode one of the movies, right? Right. Okay. You have, you have your part two of the Obi-Wan series. There's that, you know, the neon city, very much like a uh, Coruscant when Anakin and Obi-Wan are chasing, uh, the, the bounty hunter who tried to kill Padme and they find him in the bar, Jango Fett, Kills the kills them and they go on the adventure to find Django Fett. Very similar look, right? Uh yes. They have they have that kind of neon city look. Okay. They both mm -hmm. have a similar look, mm -hmm. similar motif and look. Okay. Uh, episode yeah. th or part three here. You have a Jedi burning, being Obi Wan being burnt, exactly like in episode three, Anakin being burnt. Okay. Then you have part four. Obi-Wan goes to a, a base to rescue Leia. Okay. That sound familiar? Yep. Okay. I see where you're going. Episode five, you have the Empire finding a rebel base and the rebels escape at the last minute. Cute. Okay. And episode six, you got Vader unmasked, the breathing sound effect, and of course, Force Ghost at the end. Okay. What I'm seeing is these beats and these various things were created as 
this six episode series being an homage to the parts of the original movies that Obi-Wan was in. And each one has a connection to each one of those original movies. So on top okay. of beautiful story and all these other things, I, th- I, I and maybe it's just me seeing it. I don't know if they did it on purpose, but I see them hitting specific beats to rhyme with in a, in a kind of poetry, just the type of poetry that Lucas had talked about the rhyming motifs within the movies. Right. I see this being paid homage in each one of these specific moments in each one of these that yes, there's other moments on Tatooine with, uh, with, you know, Luke on Tatooine. And I get that. And you see that, you know, there's multiple Tatooine moments in this series and in the, and in the movies, but that's, there's enough to see this kind of overarching thing of they paid homage to the original series that Obi-Wan was a part of. Not saying that seven, eight, nine aren't part of the Skywalker saga because they are. No, yeah. But this show wasn't. This show wasn't Skywalker. This show was Obi Wan. Right. And these are the six episodes that Obi Wan is a part of. Right. And it's almost like, you know, and you think about it, really, you know, Obi Wan is watching over Luke. Uh, you know, Obi Wan's watching a kid on Tatooine. Yes, he did that in episode four uh, of the original movies, but he also did that. Uh, he met a kid on Tatooine in episode one of the movies. You know what I mean? (laughs) Right, right, right. So this is, uh, I can see that to me, that's the thing. I haven't heard anybody mention this, this kind of connectivity to the original series in that each one of those seems to pay homage to themes and looks and ideas and specific story beats from the original series. What do you think? I kind of like that. I'm, I'm, I'm or? no, no. I don't think you're overthinking that. I'm curious if there, if that was intentional. I bet you. you it, it, look, man. If you're the one who, if you're, if you're seeing something like that, you can't be the only one who's seeing stuff like that. I, I think that there may be, there may have been something. I'm pretty sure that was caught when they were, when they were putting the screenplay together. You know what I mean? For the entire, for the entire series. I think that that was was caught then. Well, it makes sense in the, and again, the sense that. Some of the things that are the best things, uh, there are many fans that are, there are many people that have decried it, but I think some of the best things that happened in episode seven, eight, and nine is the connections to the previous episodes. People right. hated eight because they, the last Jedi, they hated the last Jedi because why is Luke so hiding out so cranky and so mean and so whatever. And like, okay, admittedly. Yoda was funny and shit when you first saw him in, in episode five. Right. But still he's a bitch that got beaten in a fight and ran away and it went and hit on a, on a, on a, you know, swamp planet. I just looked at, I looked at, um, from the philosophy that I was taking it, obviously like with the, um, with the introduction of this series, it does change a lot about the context, but, um, a lot of what was going on with Luke, I saw was very much an analog to Obi-Wan at the same time. When seven and eight first originally came out, everybody was pissed off that Luke was like that Luke ran away and was in hiding after that's what, what did. he did that's failed. What yeah. Did. I'm like, what that's Jedi's what fucking do. Obi-Wan did. Yeah, that's exactly what I was like. That's that's what I said. It was like Obi-Wan was part of the same thing. What was he doing? Hanging out hiding on a fucking desert planet. Like he wasn't doing anything. He hadn't done anything for decades, well, essentially, not, at that point I mean, from what okay, we had hold known. On. Hold on. Obi-Wan was at least keeping an eye on Luke and making sure nothing happened to Luke. Yoda was just on some swamp world, okay? <laughs> that's he just true. Went to some, Even to, to Yoda some was swamp like, world. Yeah, and th- that's another example. It's just kind of like, okay, you go and you hang the fuck out somewhere and stay the fuck out of sight. Like, that's what you do as a Jedi. When things go shit, you get the hell out of Dodge and you stay hidden for a while until you're needed, which is exactly what happened with Luke. And by the well, way, no. when Luke finally gets called and does what he is supposed to do, he fulfills his purpose and then he dies. Who the fuck else did that? Obi Wan, Yoda, yeah. everyone yeah. else, <laughs> every other Jedi. He literally was just the Jedi of the whole film. The reason why they call him the last Jedi is because he was and he did the same thing the other Jedi did. <laughs> 
<laughs> and what he was, what, one of the things he was trying to prove is that the Jedi Order was wrong with the way that they did things. The Jedi Order was too strict, was wrong, and in their arrogance, their arrogance caused all the things to happen. So, I mean, anyway, point being, yeah, point being, <laughs> watching watching the Obi Wan thing, obviously, to me anyway, it does make Episode Two and Three better. It fleshes those out more. It gives more to them. It makes the performances even as even as problematic as some of those performances are. I. I feel like I'm, I, I'm connected more, but I've also felt that way since I've watched the Clone Wars TV series. For anybody that still is a is a Star Wars fan and still has issues with episodes two and three, please, please, please watch the Clone Wars TV series. I know it's going to take you yeah. weeks to watch it yeah. because there's there's like six, seven seasons of it. <laughs> I understand that, but seriously, seriously, it will make it so that you can like episodes two and three better. I mean, you're not going to like them better than the se- than the Clone Wars series because the Clone Wars series is freaking awesome. But you will like them better than maybe you already do right now. Yeah. But so far as as Fair. as Obi Wan goes, still the best thing that I've seen Disney put out y- yet for the Marvel and the Star Wars properties. And that's saying something because I love all the other stuff that they've put out. There's yeah. nothing yet that I haven't liked. Uh, Boba Fett was kind of the the <laughs> least liked of all of them. Um, but. But even still, amazing series, and I, I firmly believe, you know, you're right. I, I'm sure that somebody else has seen this, just nobody else has talked about this. And the, the, if that, again, if that was part of the purpose, was to pay a little homage to each one of the episodes of the, uh, uh, that Obi-Wan was in in the original movies. Yeah. By having those little story beats, that just, again, adds to this kind of, this poetic motif that was part of what George Lucas was trying to do is these are modern day fairy tales. These are modern day fables. Mm -hmm. They're not supposed to be, they're not supposed to be necessarily um, realistic and too nasty and dirty and gritty. They're supposed to have that, that fantastical quality to them and they can get gritty to an extent, but still maintain that, that kind of poetry. And yeah, involved. yeah, and I that's agree. What I, that's what I think this series was able to do. Okay, so I I feel first off, I agree with I agree with pretty much everything you've said on, on that, and I'm going to consider you I'm going to consider you much more an expert on the on, on the matter than me. But as as that is in play, I want to ask you a question. I feel like this is a good place to, and I'm not I'm not trying to like hijack the episode or anything like that, but I feel like this is a good place to close out if you don't mind, but I want to close out with something specific and I want to get, this is, this is all you. Okay. Okay. So considering this series, considering the, uh, considering everything about it, what is your new star Wars viewing order based on this series? And where would you insert it? Um, this, this would go, this would go where it's appropriate for it to go. Um, and <laughs> okay. this would be, this would be, I, no, seriously, I, you laugh as, as I'm saying that. This would be, um, this would be the only Star Wars series that I believe at this point is required viewing for, uh, to go along with the movies. Right. Um, uh, and I add Rogue One into the Skywalker saga only because it is such a good movie. It really, well, it really adds, is. It adds and that's, so much context that does to episode get dark. four. Yeah. I mean, basically every protagonist in that movie dies. Yeah. So spoiler I mean, warning. It, it's got it, it. It's got some darkness in there, but um, it's also about it's also about how even out of that hope can come out. So that's kind of the whole theme of Star Wars, anyway. Right. But it's just such a great movie. Um. So the proper viewing order at this point would be, um, I would say, watch episode four. Okay. Start off with the original. Okay. Um, hit Rogue One again because yep. you've just found out what the plans in the Death Star, so now you get to go back and watch, uh, watch how they got the plans. Okay, four and then Rogue One. Four Rogue One, mm-hmm. then Episode Five. Five. And then after Episode Five, you have that moment on the bridge with, uh, with, um, you know, Vader being introspective because Luke just flew away. Yeah. And you didn't realize his daughter just flew away as well. Yeah. Um, you watch Episodes One, Two, and Three. Okay. Watch Obi Wan. Okay, Obi Wan all the way through. Three. Five, one, two, three, all six episodes of Obi Wan, right? All six episodes of Obi Wan. Okay. Then watch episode six. Okay, four, Rogue One, five, 
One, two, three. Obi Wan, six. And then seven. Man, take a. Then you can take a break for a while and uh, come back to seven, eight, nine <laughs> okay. later. That's okay. <laughs> no, so it's I okay. Seven, take eight, a little nine bit of a order. break. Yeah, that makes a little sense. bit of distance. A little bit of distance actually will help a little bit. Yeah. Um, let all that other stuff Di- sink into you, and when you come digest back to the information, you back to, huh? <laughs> digest the information. That, and when you come back to seven, eight, nine, you get you know you get some distance, and when you see Han Solo and and Chewbacca again, you can have a little thrill of excitement. When you see Leia yeah. and Luke again, you can have a thrill of excitement. Yeah. And and you know that's that's that gives you a little bit of that, but you definitely. Definitely, I do believe that at this point, after episode three, Obi Wan should be should be your viewing. You, it is essential, I think, to watch as part of the the full narrative. It gives you more, and uh, that the, you, you don't want to miss the the the, the sixth uh, part of that and everything that happens in there. I mean, it's. <sighs> Well, I like how when you look beautiful. at four and then you look at Rogue One, you start to get a good example of the amount of, especially if, when you look at Darth Vader's tragic story, right? And how he becomes one of the most feared beings in the fucking universe is you start to get a good example of how powerful he actually is in Rogue One. Like you get a legit example. Yeah. But then by the time, if you go through all of... You know, you that's go through actually, one, two, and three, and then why, you go through Obi Wan. That, yeah. Sorry, what were you saying? That's actually why I want. I, I think it's appropriate to watch Rogue One before you watch Episode Five. Because yeah. There's the moment in Episode yeah. Five where he where he chokes out the Admiral um, from he's sitting in he's sitting on his ship. He's sitting on the Executor. He chokes out the Admiral uh, either on uh, somewhere else on his ship or on another ship, and then yeah. promotes Captain Piet to Admiral Piet. Yeah. He he pulls that and. What you see of him in episode four is not quite enough for you to believe that he's that powerful. Right. But if you watch, so if you watch Rogue One and see that last scene of Rogue One, and then near the beginning of episode five, within the first third of episode five, you see him pull that choke from one starship to the other. Right. You're like, yeah, okay, that, 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 that fucker that just decimated a hallway full of people, he could totally do that. Right. He could totally pull that off. But then you see all the other shit that happens in Obi-Wan too, and that is... That's where I think is, so by the time you hit six and you've got the, you have Lucas captured, you have the fight between the two of them, um, you have all of the gravitas of the entirety of Vader's backstory now in the middle of, in the middle of that fight. When Vader, you can tell now Vader is not only as powerful as he is, the dude's taking down ships with like you know snap of his fingers practically. He's fucking choking people out in the streets with n- reckless abandon. He's dragging people through fire. He's just going batshit at that point. So that's the he's the evilest motherfucker in the universe. You could tell at that point. And then what do you see at the end? You see the humanness that comes out in him with the conflict between his son about to be killed by the one person he's followed his entire life. And the amount of power he has the capability of going of, of harnessing at any point in time. And the fact that he violates that loyalty to save his kid. That has so much more weight to it now that you have the entirety of Obi-Wan and Rogue One and everything else you've seen from his character at that point. That makes that redemption so much bigger um, than it has been just watching the movies. Yeah. I mean that's where I that's where I think about it. So I don't, I, 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 and I, I agree entirely with your whole that. viewing with with the the viewing assessment. Like that's exactly what I would do. That's exactly yeah, how that's, I would watch it. And and yes, it does mean that that's what I'm going to make my wife sit through at some point or another. Um, oh, you're I'll, making a whole weekend, nice man. And, you're getting a weekend out of it. Uh, oh, for for no, I'm getting like a whole week out of it because <laughs> she can only take so much at a time. Um, she'll be excited <laughs> to watch the Obi Wan series again. She really really liked that. Oh, it was but, killer. Uh, yeah, she like she likes four, five, six, and seven, eight, and nine. She is not really a fan of one, two, and three, but that's okay. That makes sense. I got a kid that'll watch it with me. But anyway, <laughs> um, hopefully, hopefully, uh, you enjoyed my theory. And if you have not seen Obi Wan yet, I'm sorry for spoiling it. Go watch it now. There's still more that I didn't get all the way into. 
Um, but maybe you can be on the lookout for some of the, these things. Um, so Mike, yeah, where, where can people listen to us talk about, uh, more star Wars stuff? Oh man. Did I forget? Well, you can be checking us out at our website, the com or zencron.com. If you don't want to type that much, you could also check us out at most major podcast platforms. Just search for the Zenial Chronicles. You could find us there. Also, check us out on YouTube as well. We are there. Our podcasts come out in video format as well. Search for the Zenial Chronicles in YouTube search. You'll find us there. Uh, you'll probably be listening to this most likely in video format if you already are. Please make sure underneath this video or wherever it is, you go down and you hit the like button on the video, and you also hit the subscribe button next to the like button over there, uh, so that next time we have a podcast, it comes up on YouTube, you get notified. And there's also one more thing to do, James. What is that? Click the bell. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It's, I'm sorry. Click the bell. <laughs> it's cutting off. You said, I'm sorry. It's cutting off, and you just said, lick the bell, and it's in the recording. <laughs> And I'm leaving it. Hey, man, if you want to lick that bell, that's okay. I would sanitize it first, but whatever. Your own choice. Hey, and, some and people like way, to live dangerously. My, my choice of sanitizer, just, just so we're clear, my choice of sanitizer, if I'm going to lick something afterwards, whiskey, but not Jack Daniels because that stuff is crap. I mean, to each his own, I guess, because I love the hell out of that. And you're wrong. <laughs> and I'm wrong, of course. Uh, all right. And uh, I think that, yes, make sure you click the bell or lick the bell if you wish. Uh, in order to get notified the next time we have a video out on YouTube. And uh, James, I think that's it for me. What about yourself, sir? Um, while you're there, while you're checking us out and licking the bell and whatever else you're doing, <laughs> um, please make sure to check out Mike's two other podcasts, not podcasts, two other pages on YouTube. Hey, we've been out. We've been off for a few it's been a while. <laughs> we're, a little, we're a little rusty and I don't like the taste of WD-40. Um, Mike's two other pages on YouTube. He has a page that he does with his wife playing video games called Chronosode Games. This is them playing video games in chronological order of the story, not in order of when the games were released. Right, exactly. But basically, it's just it's just Mike playing video games badly. Yep. Yep. And doing I, really bad voiceover as well. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, I mean, I'm terrible. I'm just terrible overall, but at least it's entertaining, at least I hope. And that's the, that's the important part is we need yeah. something to entertain us. Yeah. Um, Mike's other page that he's not as uh, terrible with is <laughs> his ruling note music page where he does uh, different videos about uh, music history, musical information, gear information, because Mike, Mike does music stuff other than doing yeah. all of this and, and learning more about star Wars and being browbeaten into watching uh, stuff that he's not sure he wants to watch, but then enjoys it afterwards because come oh, yeah. on, man, I'm the guy that recommends movies. That's what I do. <laughs> um, anyway, check that out too. Like both of those subscribe. Yeah. Uh, click the bells on those so that you, so that you get uh, notified so that you have more content in your life. Anyway, thank you all for listening and we'll be back again. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I want to wet some whistles here. I wanna what? Wet some whistles. What? Next week, next week, yes, we're going to be talking about the other the thing that you watched today that we oh, didn't get a yes. chance to touch on. And yeah, uh, t- today Mike watched a Marvel movie. I actually watched a Marvel movie. This is correct. I have and not I'm seen a Marvel him. movie in years, years, and I finally watched one. And it's 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 actually my my wife's favorite Marvel movie. She she was excited to go to the theater to watch this. Because it's the first Marvel movie that I can say is not uh, your standard just action flick. It is a almost horror homage. I not would really say a that, movie, but definitely a horror or o- yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good way of putting it. Anyway, we will talk about that movie. Yeah, enough of when we come back. Uh, enough of the teasing, man. Not a tease. We'll talk about that when we come back next week. Lick the bell. Go enjoy yourselves. Thank you for tuning in, friends. The journey continues next week.